Welcome to the Puckin' Stoner Dad Show. With your host, Dusty. All these franchises and all these people that used to fucking control me. The Ginge. Happy to be here. Looking forward to playing. Listen to us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Check out our short form content on Shorts and TikTok. Yo, what is going on, everyone? Welcome back. Episode number 22. Ginge, buddy. How's it going, man? Pet. Oh, it doesn't sound like it's about to be going good soon. I hear two cats growling underneath the desk. Fuck off. Definitely wouldn't be a podcast if he didn't have some sort of animal going off once we hit that record button. Man, it's like they know. I know, right? They're, yeah. Like, let's, fuck, let's, let's fuck with them because they're about to start recording and that's what we do. Like the cat was laying right there being cute yeah. as fuck before you hit record. And then as yeah. soon as you hit record, fight with another <laughs> cat that I didn't know was down here. Yeah, we were just talking for what? At least five minutes there. Yeah, we're just laying yeah. there looking at me. And then, boom, yeah. lights on, <laughs> show's running, let's fuck yeah. with shit. It's time. It's almost like the yeah. kid. Well, I, I, I think they're just getting excited, like we are, right? Yeah. Getting uh, excited for the preseason, you know? It's how yeah. many days? Two. Uh, first game. Training camp's open. First game's Two on Sunday. days Here's until Ottawa. the first game. I'm pumped, man. How many times did we text each other this summer saying how depressed we were because yeah. there was just no hockey and it's almost here so we can be I, depressed I, for a new reason? Basically, I don't know even know if you remember doing it, but I got a text probably about once a week with a random player. You say in player days until uh, hockey starts. Ah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was all. It was always just random ones too, right? Like, yeah, you got to think outside the box. Always. So, a lot has happened since uh, we shot the last, last, last episode. We had some, we went to record, we were going to record, what, last week, I think we were going to? No, it goes back before that, because uh, I think the last time, or the first time we were about to record, somebody let a foster dog outside, and then him and I were out on foot all night looking for it. Oh, yeah. Yep. And then he lost that same dog three times. <laughs> Yeah, okay, yeah. And then and I then, got Yeah, you got really sick. Yeah. That Man, I told you it's like the kids know, Ben, you got to <laughs> go upstairs. You have to. Ben one because I said I am back. Um, <laughs> Frig, that first bowl hit good. What the fuck was I talking about? Uh, you said you were uh, just about to say how like you were sick. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> so, I'm sick for like a week and I can't figure out why. And then I'm sitting with, uh, with my buddy at work and he says, Oh, by the way, last week when we were working with Jason's crew, he, he had COVID. They all did. It's like, huh, that makes sense. And then you just watched it trickle across the family. And then last night, my wife was in the hospital for chest and arm pains, uh, that we still haven't even heard from the doctor. Seriously. Yeah. So it's been uh, just. Uh, yeah, it hasn't been ending. a good time for you guys. It hasn't been a good time in your house, man. No. 
And as soon as something like, oh man, it feels so good to actually be sitting right here in front of the camera right now. Like I didn't th every night, like the other night when Simon was sick, just uh, and then every time yeah. I try to get up from the from the rocking chair to leave his room to come down here to record, he'd be like, <laughs> oh. Man, I sat up there. I was like, I don't think we're ever going to get to do a show again. I just think this is cursed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, here we are. We're getting her done. And, we're alive. Uh, we are. And so all this happens. And I did I send you a text Sunday? Or no, I sent it to you Monday. So Sunday, like a week ago, almost a week ago now. I'm uh, cutting my grass, and I have one of those lawnmowers, you know, they're the manual ones where, like, you push it and the blades spin. So, like, it's my, I'm the horsepower behind that baby. Yeah. And I got, a, there was a little wood chip thing that got stuck in it. So, I'm, like, trying to get it, I'm, like, fuck it, and then I flipped it over, and I saw it, so I'm, like, trying to push it through. It's, like, it's giving me, like, you know, some pushback. And so I shoved it, and it went, boom, it went right down, and the blade, it fucking sliced my finger. So that was the picture I sent you that day. I was like, yeah, it sliced my finger on a lawnmower. Oh, yeah. So, we, yeah. Uh, that, oh, the fingers get it good, eh? Yeah. Healed yeah, up nice. There was a day at work a couple of weeks ago. We were moving rubber with a forklift to get ready for a rubber roof. That yeah, I think you sent, when you sent me that picture. Oh, yeah, I got yeah. my hand got pinned in between the trailer and the forks. Oh, Jeez, I could feel bro. my heartbeat in my finger, like my stomach was in yeah. my throat, my nuts were oh. in my asshole, like I was yeah. just in a mess. Oh, Ooh. yeah, that doesn't sound like fun at all, bro. And that kind of stuff happens like once a week on the roof, yeah. Well. Pretty much one of those job sites, right? Yeah. You, though, for the lawnmower thing, you need, like, a, an old wrench or something. If you're going to be poking around in the motor blade yeah. or in the blades, yeah, yeah that'll help. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <I'd> just, <laughs> whatever. I'd rather a little nick in my blade than a, a chunk out of my finger. Yeah, so... Basically, I just, uh, so that happened, right? I, I pretty much, like, barely, like, have cut any of my grass. So I run inside, and I grab a paper towel, and I wrap it around it. So Try to stop the bleeding. And I'm like, well, fuck it. I still got to cut the grass. So I went out and finished it. Finished cutting the grass. Trimmed it. You know, uh, blew it. Blew it all out. Raked up all the grass and shit. And then I went into Emily. I'm like, yeah, do you want to wrap this? She's like, oh, my God. When did yeah. that happen? I'm like, I don't know. Right when I started cutting the grass, she's like, wait, you finished cutting the grass? Do it all that? I'm like, yeah. Well, priorities. <laughs> yeah, I did next shift out, bud. The grass ain't a emo. It's not going to cut itself. Exactly. So, yeah, that's been, that, that's been in the weeks, this past couple of weeks, but we actually have missed quite a bit of stuff in the hockey world this lately. Yeah, we saw it happening, guys. We were there when it yeah. happened. We just didn't report yeah. back to you because my life was hectic. A lot went on. Yeah, end of summer. We're going to get into what happened at the end of summer at the end of the episode. I can barely um, remember the end of summer. Yeah. So we had some contracts that were given out. Uh, the very first one, Leon Dreisaitl signs for $14 million, eight years. Wow. He became the highest paid player in the NHL next yeah, year. Yeah, it really sets the tone for the contracts coming up. What? <laughs> Good for him. Does he deserve it? Yeah. He's been the number one guy. In Get the, the playoffs, fuck out of that. the past four years, 
cat almost just lit its face on yeah. fire with my candle, just so you know. But keep going. <laughs> but Leon Dreis, <laughs> Leon Dreis title has been the number one guy in the playoffs of point producers. Uh, I believe it was a couple of years ago or something like that. It was like Leon Dreis title led the whole playoffs in goals. And he was knocked out in the second round. Yeah. And so in the yeah, Stanley Cup final, machine. it was when Vegas won it. It was when Vegas won the cup. Yeah. It was Marcia yeah, Show. Marcia that. Show just out tied him or something like that. Yeah. In the Stanley Cup final. So, like, yeah, I think he deserves that. But, like, I wonder what McDavid's going to want. Because you're going to give McDavid That's whatever. That's the thing, right? Wants. Like, I find dry side, he's such a machine. Like, I don't know if he was on a team without McDavid, like, or if McDavid was without dry side, like, it, who do you think fares better without the other? Um, I think so. This is well, I think dry side will be just fine. I think, still think he would produce like he produces. Uh, he's not as good as McDavid. No one's even close to being as good as McDavid. McDavid is his own tier in the NHL, and then it's below tier. Well, just coach, coach Chip. Yeah. I think well, he's pretty close. You know what I find really, really actually kind of funny? There's no debate who's the best hockey player in the league right now. The debate's at who's the second best. Yeah. Oh, it's like first is mcdavid and then there's like six options where someone's yeah. like yeah but the, 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 the. exactly though right like there's an argument to be made of who is the second best player in the league and then you gotta you start argue. looking at like subdivisions right mm-hmm. maybe you say matthews well you're right in this area but if you look in other areas he's far from second best then you think you know yeah. Well, McKinnon and like, yeah, I think McKinnon's probably the second best. Mm-hmm. Definitely. But it's like a debate. I would right? think McKinnon's like, second. All a matter of opinion. Yeah. I would put McKinnon second. And he produced in the playoffs and like, yeah. So we had hit that. Uh, so I'd say it was, a, I'd say that's a good contract. Do you like the contract? For dry sidle? Yeah. I don't yeah. I don't think I, he's a guy you can really overpay for what he's done in the playoffs. I, I would call for like, him in the playoffs. That's what I was least. about to say, right? Like looking at everything he's done, he hasn't won a cup, but man, he's come fucking close. Mm-hmm. And Game he seven. played a big part in that. And even when they don't make it fire, like he said two seconds ago, when they don't make it fire, he still plays such a big part in the playoffs that they're still talking about him in the finals. McDavid, exactly. too, but this ain't his mm-hmm. contract. That's why we're not talking about him. Yep. I I like it, but I think it sets the tone, right? It's going to be like, what's next? Like, what's Paul Mariner writing in his diary before bed? Wait, now? I, man, you, I don't, Marner is an amazing player. Don't go, I, Marner is a great regular season player. Regular season. But I right. would, I would still not put him up in that kind of category. Still, man. No. No. I I saw actually I saw an interesting question on Twitter about ten minutes ago while I was getting this already. Actually, uh, do you think Mariner deserves to make more than Nylander going forward? No. Nah, not a me either. No. I think Nylander should have that A on his shirt, and Mariner should not. But whatever. The, I don't even so, need shit on the guy. He's an amazing player, like you said. It's just like we're we're my doing reasoning for that too, though. For yeah, a different team, a, a whole individual team who's second best to yeah. Austin Matthews. I don't think it's Mitch Mariner. Maybe, maybe when it comes to flashy plays, but all around, <laughs> who produces in the playoffs? Actually, you could argue, I think Marner and Nylander are pretty much almost exactly the same. But 
I guarantee you break it down to elimination games, though. And I bet you Nylander's produced in those elimination games a lot more than Marner has. And, like, talk regular season. Marner's an amazing player in the regular season, but when it comes to clutch moments, like when the puck's on the stick and it has to go in and it's last minute or it's overtime, nine times out of ten, it's Nylander. Mm -hmm. We'll complain that he skated like a bag coming back in the second period, but he scored the game winner in overtime for some reason. Yep. 100%, man. Okay, so try settle. Another big contract. The next contract handed out. Uh, Sidney Crosby. Oh, what a fucking goddamn gentleman. Two year, $8.7 million. I hope this sets the tone for other old, washed up men in the NHL about to sign a contract, JT. Anyway, that was a Dude, fucking I generous. If Brad True Living gives him eight point seven million dollars, I hope he gets fucking fired. Yeah, that's true. Eight point seven for JT is way too much. I would, but, man. I would be fucking livid. But a Crosby man, he could make a, a little more than that. Crosby could have made twelve. And uh, yeah, especially with who he's dealing with. Dubis, yeah. yeah, he could have made thirteen five. <laughs> he could have made fucking and the cover of NHL yeah. twenty six. Crosby could have got max, max a two year max deal. My hot is, is when six, uh, Crosby I think max retired. Is sixteen point four million dollars, I think, is a max contract. Sixteen point four. Let me check that. I think it will be on Puck. Compare TV. that to Steph Curry's one year deal he just signed uh, in the NBA. Yeah. Oh, man. Steph Curry's almost the whole salary cap. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Did you know that Washington Capitals are $10.27 million over the cap right now? Oh. They got to do some trimming. Yeah. There is one, two, three, four, five teams over the cap. Leafs, are they on that list? Yep. Yeah. One point one point zero seven million. That's easily oh. shedded. That's Connor That's Timmons. Nothing. That'll be Connor Timmons, and then we'll give a uh, thirty thousand dollars cap space. Yeah, thirty thousand dollars for and Connor Dewar me. and Connor Dewar are probably going LTIR because I know he's going to be hurt. <laughs> so we'll see. Actually, uh, okay. I had so a had sobering moment. Some leaf talk. What's I was going to say some the leaf talk too. While we're getting into leaf talk, we might as well say the the two contracts too, right? So Nick Robertson signed the one year. Uh, I believe it was like eight hundred seventy five thousand dollars, somewhere around that. And then yeah, Yanni Hockenpah signs a $1.47 million contract. And we find out he can play. Yeah. Which is earth-shattering news. Not knee-shattering, earth-shattering. <laughs> <laughs> and then they bring in uh, Max Pesciarotti on a professional tryout. I saw him on the ice today, man. He was actually looking pretty good. I'm he excited to kind of see him in some fucking games. Studly, yeah. Yeah. Like, I know it's just, like, obviously it's training camp, right? But, like, I don't even if they can take advantage of his speed, man. They're so slow last year, the team. I think this could come together real well. Mm hmm. But. It, it could. Like, uh, the, this team probably is going to be really good this year. I'm high on this team this year. Yeah, me too. Uh, the only thing is, I'm like, the thing that pisses me off is, it's like, it's this year, right? We, we've we worked ourselves into quite a conundrum where, yeah, this year we can look at the roster and say, yeah, this looks good, but next year we're going to lose half of it because we can't fucking figure out a way to keep it around. Do we, though? We haven't. Marner's not officially signed yet. 
Johnny's off the books. So that's Is that like almost true? Tw- that's twenty two million off the books between those two, pretty much. True, true. True. So, I guess man, I'm not I, thinking like I, that. I if I'm the least right now, man, like I honestly really think about uh extending Mitch during the season or John. I say why don't you wait until the playoffs plays out? Why don't you use that little window that you do have till July first and just say fuck it, whatever. Oh yeah, that's what I'd do. Oh, 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 oh. Worth the risk. Why not take a risk, man? It's, this this franchise needs to take something of a risk. A a sensical, logical risk too. Not like a let's sign another thirty-seven-year-old veteran defender who's losing three of his knees mm-hmm. to a two-year one-way deal. That's risk that we do every single fucking season. Let's take a risk that is actually risky with some reward. Mm-hmm. That's why I, I'm not going to lie, man. This, I'm actually really excited for this season because it's going to be something different. Like It, it feels different of... this year, but it's not a feels different like, oh, we're, we're going to win the cup. We're going to see what this team has regardless this year. This yeah, I don't this, know if I think this we, is this score's last chance, man. This has to be. I think if they wanted to, they would have had Marner signed in the summer. The, I yeah. think this is okay. You guys want to stick together. Fucking show us you want to stick together, especially now with the news of Rogers actually buying uh Bell Media shares in MLSE. Yes. Because allegedly, man, uh, Rogers was actually trying to make changes, and Larry Tannenbaum was uh, saying, "No, no, you're not doing this." Allegedly. So, I don't. I got. We're gonna see. Like, I, I don't know. Like with new ownership with this team too, you gotta think that is gonna play a factor into this year. a lot of new yeah. shit man new ownership like new well, not really new owners but like a new majority owner i guess you could say no yeah um they like they hold the reins for sure yeah all new coaching staff right like everyone's new besides uh mike van ryan i think he was the only returning coach yeah i think so yeah fuck yeah, it's going to be interesting. We're not seeing the same old shit this year. No. It might give us the same old result, but it doesn't look... I, I don't think it will. And another thing, man. This is no longer John's team. True. This is Austin's team, man. This is this is the new era of Austin. I don't... Look, for, look for some more Bieber in the mix. Well, with the new sponsor, Oreo, oh, yeah. on the oh, helmet. Yeah. Nice and fitting, though, with the fucking the milk sponsor of the, the jersey. Milk, yeah. milk and cookies. They're one of my favorite snacks. Yeah, Oreos are pretty dope. It has to be the double stuff, though. Well, this day and age, yeah. I remember when I was a kid, you could just get away with single stuff because they were actually yeah. the same size. Now they're like, the double stuff yeah. is just a little, little guy. Yeah, I know, right? It was the size of like a regular oil. And when you open the box, half of them are broken. Oh man, remember like I remember as a kid opening cookies and like they're huge and like you get them now and it's like the fuck is this thing? Just a little guy. Yeah. Like a rich not mini much. cracker. I was gonna say not much bigger than a loony. Hey, bud. A fucking not loony. much bigger than a fucking loony, bud. Ask Robin Shabatsky. <laughs> Robin Shabatsky. So, have you been watching uh, much of the training camp stuff? No, I haven't been able to watch fuck all. I I don't even like 
Where are these people seeing it? So I watched a little. I watched some of the rookie rookie tournament. I watched it online. It was on the Lee's website. Uh, I watched a whole whole lot of it. I watched a little little bit of it. You were pretty much dying at that point. If I remember correctly. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't yeah. even have the energy to ask people yeah. how they were watching shit. Yeah. Cowan looked really good. Mittenen was looking good. Mittenen's injured. Good, What's good. Of Dan- course he is. Ben Danford got injured. Our uh, first overall pick this year. Concussion. Um, Not good. I didn't really notice Cade Weber right there, but apparently he actually played pretty decent. From what I've heard. Hey, sometimes uh, not noticing them is a good thing. Yeah. But then again, I was actually, while I was watching it, though, I was also with uh, my daughter. She's kind of yeah, playing so you don't notice later, everything. So. Eh? so, yeah, you're not like you're watching, but you're not watching, you know? Yeah. But yeah, it's a rookie camp, right? Like, you're obviously, it's the first hockey in a while. So, yeah, let's, let's sit there and overanalyze pretty much a meaningless tournament. Like it's yeah, good for yeah. them, obviously, and shows them kind of steps and shit like that, and like the development. But like, really, you're not going to see half these kids, and if you are, it's going to be a while away. Yeah, oof. the teams that we watch now won't be the same when these kids come into the mix. Exactly. Yeah. Like a cow, Cowan is it Cowan or Cohen? Uh, I believe it's Easton Cowan. Okay, Cowan. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, like when him and Minton come in, I think like that's going to be like a new era of Maple Leaf hockey. Yeah. Like, we're not going to be hoping for a cup with Austin Matthews anymore. Like, we'll either have like. Oh, I think we will. I think I think you still look at him. I think you look at bringing in. I guess, hey. yeah. Austin Matthews isn't in his thirties yet. Yeah, I think you're gonna look at like say Mittenen maybe be. I think he's gonna be maybe if we're lucky a second line center. Like uh, probably a third line, second third line center. Like how you're saying? How long from now? Maybe a year or two. Obviously, he's okay. not gonna play this year because he got injured. Okay. Maybe next year. I think he would have played some games this year if he wasn't injured, but yeah, I guess we'll, I don't. Man, this sickness had me so far out of the loop, man. Yeah, no doubt. I feel like I missed everything. I feel like uh, someone else already won the cup, and I missed the entire season. <laughs> the preseason cup, bud. Ottawa won. Yeah, I can't believe Utah won in their first year. What the fuck? <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh, I'd be so upset. Yeah, no shit. So they win the cup before they even yeah. have a team name. Imagine. <laughs> <laughs> so now we got some other. <laughs> we got a couple other. Uh... We'll get back into some leaf sock and that. Uh, we got a game we're gonna play. I also I want to talk about a couple more guys. Kite- people first we got uh mason mason raymond or lucas raymond sorry not mason lucas raymond lucas raymond and mo cider signing both signing with detroit uh raymond got eight years cider got seven uh wow i believe they're both around eight eight something million dollars i think each those guys are gonna be good man especially mo cider i don't detroit could has potential man Detroit is going to be a playoff team within four years. And I'm not saying like they're going to make the fir- first round once and then you won't hear from them like again. Consistent I mean, like, playoff team. They're yeah. going to be annoying. Mm-hmm. Like Carolina is right now where Carolina doesn't even really have a star, but they've been in the playoffs so much that you're almost scared of them. Mm-hmm. I can see it. Those guys, those are good signings for them. And then we go to the one... Most known RFA, I guess, right now. Swayman. Jay Sway. 
Man. How weird is that? It's an actual Boston prospect to do it. It's like a Boston guy doing this. Like you never see Boston do this at all. No, like just a couple of years ago, Brad Marchand was bragging Look. that they all take team friendly deals, everyone on the roster. Yeah. Which they all have, man. I would say pass pass is worth the eleven million dollars he gets. Yeah. Yeah. McAvoy is, I think, around $9 million, too. I'd say he deserves that. I, to be what honest, do you man, think I, happens here, though? What? what do you think happens? Like, I think that Jeremy Swain... I think, Sw- I think he should keep holding out. Do you think he should because it's smart, or do you think he should because it's funny to watch Va- Boston squirm with no goalie this this Both. Late? Both. Okay, good. <laughs> like, at the same time, man, he, he, dude, he stole the series against Toronto. A hundred percent he did. He did, but like, from a general manager's standpoint, I'm terrified to look at another D. Pietro. Yeah, but you don't have, to, uh, true, but still. Because even if you you're paying gamble? $11 million this year and not for 20 years like New York did, maybe Boston doesn't want to spend $11 million on a goalie right. this year. To be honest, man, I don't think a goalie should make over $10 million. I know they're the most important thing on your roster. But I, st- I don't think a goalie should be making that. You can all go Having and said say that, that though. Honest. I would still put him between eight to nine and a half, at least. I'd, so. I'd pay. I'd pay him eight million a year. I'd pay him nine nine and a half million a year. Yeah. 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 If you know, I'm what you're Boston. Getting. I'm also, Boston. If- Though uh, no, I may, nervous, maybe right? eight seven five eight seven five. Yeah, I say just just... eight seven five, and then I go okay, and I show him, and I'm like okay. I, I approach Swim, and I go okay. This is how we're gonna spend that extra money that we that you do want this is what we plan on doing with that money that we're not giving to you transparency 100 percent, man like i don't know if i'm signing a, especially long term right because boston is one of those teams that should be aging out right yeah they should be at least I still look at them and I I would go, well, if I'm going to sign here, like, what is the plan? Like, am I going to be a part of a rebuild? Eventually, he's going to have to be. Yeah. That's probably what he's looking at, man. He's probably like, well, I don't really want to be on a fucking rebuild right now. Like, you know. Yeah, that's a good point. They're they're up. What goes up must come down, and they've been up for a while. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, look at uh, like Pitt, kind of right. Like they were up and they were so good for so long, and they're kind of like that like middling team now. Yeah, we'll we'll get into that though. We're gonna do uh, we are gonna do se- uh, season pre division previews, uh, division predictions. I guess we're gonna call it. Uh, we're going to release one of those a day, and I think we'll start the 23rd, I would say, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I think would be good days for those to come out. Yeah. Sounds yeah? good. I think so, too. All right. Um, so we can either do... You want to do the Matt and John, or do you want to do the over under? 
We should probably not end on a low note, so let's yeah, do that it. now. Yeah, Matt. Okay, so what is it? What now? Probably about two weeks ago now. We uh, lost Matthew and uh, Johnny Goudreau to uh, a drunk driver. Very, very tragic news. It's uh, it's felt, man. You're still feeling it in the hockey world right now. Yeah, uh, well, all uh, for forever. Like, yeah, like in more news and more news is coming out. Obviously, right? But that's kind of like, you know, I'm kind of like kind of glad we kind of let it wait so then we know a lot more than kind of at the time we didn't know what was going on yeah um i don't even want to say the guy's name it's not even worth giving him that kind of publicizing his name i think yeah we will call him huge asshole yeah exactly don't fucking drink and drive like it's not worth it and you can you ruin many many lives look at, look i don't even like veteran, drinking man. away from my house let alone no, drinking a, i know yeah like matthew both matthew and johnny had children on the way Matthew, yeah. uh Matt, uh johnny was expecting his third she was what nine weeks i think it said she said at the funeral And uh, like, yeah, the tragedy, I mean, man. Like, tra- all the news that kept coming out was just more heartbreaking and heartbreaking. It was like the night before his sister's wedding, like she lost both her brother. And like, yeah, I, I just couldn't imagine that situation. I wouldn't even know. You never know, it. man. You never. They were going for a bike ride the night before yeah. their sister's wedding, man. And you some never fucking know. asshole. Some fucking asshole decided I did the drink and drive. He needs to be held responsible for his actions. And he is. Apparently, he's going to be. He's in jail. He's in there till. Like October till his court, like he was denied bail. Yeah, and he was so fucking distraught, <sighs> sighing, yeah. and yeah, show some fucking respect, man. Like and remorse. Yeah, shows no remorse, and. Like this is such a it's such a public case now too, right? Like, yeah, yeah. It's not like, yeah. He's probably like, that guy. Probably is safer in jail than he is out. Yeah, probably. Hundred percent. Uh, did you hear the news this week about what Columbus is doing for Johnny? I saw a lot of headlines about they, stuff that uh, was going on, but I didn't really click on anything. Yeah. So they announced that they were going to keep his stall in the dressing room with his jersey okay. and all his equipment there. Like they're going to keep it there, and it's going to be there for every home game. I think every home game or every game or something like that. Hmm. They're going to put his jersey and his equipment out. Sweet. That's. Yeah. Wow. The old poor man, he was very, he, they were both very loved, clearly. Like, just heartbreaking news, right? Like, I remember hearing it and I was like, what? Remember, I messaged you and I was like, man, there's rumors going on right now in the morning. Yeah, it started out just like no one knew on Twitter. Everyone knew what was going mm-hmm. on, but no one knew yeah, what was going did, on. Yeah, some people did, yeah. Like, it was all over the place, but nothing was confirmed, and everyone was like, please, someone confirm this, and, like, a lot of us were saying, hey, if they're not denying it, if they're saying we can't confirm it, they just confirmed it. Mm -hmm. I said that on multiple posts. Like, if if they say, yeah, sorry, we cannot confirm or deny this, they just Mm -hmm. confirmed it. Exactly. They definitely it. 
when it's a denial, it's real easy. Yeah, no, it wasn't him. He would have been on Twitter himself. Yeah, guys, no, it was a hoax. Like, man, I remember I read Ooh. on the internet that Fluffy Iglesias there was dead, and th- 30 seconds later, he was on Twitter saying, no, not me, guys. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, it definitely would have been uh, would have been out a lot really quick if he wasn't. Yeah, yeah people would know and when you don't know when it comes to like a that kind of thing no news is not good news Mm -hmm. but yeah it was heartbreaking it still is uh i can't even imagine as someone who has kids like i couldn't imagine leaving my wife just with I, i know yeah I don't even know. Like, if I uh, I roles reversed, I would not even know where to begin if my wife was to just pass on. I was, yeah, I wouldn't even know. I have no clue, man. Like, how do you fuck pull yourself together after that? Yeah. I just, yeah. It's hard to even wrap my head around it. Yeah. But. Don't drink and drive, right. guys. Yes. Fuck it. Don't, Don't do it. Yeah. No. Because you might think that, oh, you did. I love hearing people say, too, oh, no, I'd be a great driver when I'm drunk. Like, Dude. No, you're not. Don't no. even test it. No. Don't find no, it. No. Yeah. Don't do it. Call friend. Call new call taxi, Uber taxis. They run all the time. Uber They're not that bad Bus. to pay. Uber doesn't exist here, but rideshare programs, uh, buses. Stay the night. Sleep in your car. Fucking, uh, you know what's actually fun? Walking home when you're drunk. I've had some great yeah. walks while I'm drunk. That is true. I've had some really good ones too. Oh yeah. Sometimes you yeah. think you got home and then you kind of doze off and then you realize, wow, I'm not <laughs> even home. This ain't my driveway. <laughs> <laughs> so true. All right. So we're going to take, basically we just got to do a hard right turn out of this. So we are going to play the game. Ah, uh, oh. what? Fuck! What? I lost the game. Oh, Henry, shit. I lost the game. I lost the game. Cedric. How do you know that one? How do I know? <laughs> <laughs> He's serious. My nine-year-old's right friend just asked me how I know about the game. Henry, everybody, Man. you can come into the camera, Henry. Our generation invented that game. This is uh, one of the snipers on my son's hockey team. Oh yeah, what's that, bud? He's uh, he says, "What's up?" Hello. 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 Henry the first. Henry the first. Eh? Henry All right. Hello. So. All right, can I you got the game here. You can see everything. <laughs> I'm gonna do... I can see that, but I can't read it. No, I can read it. There we go. Uh, ooh, shit. Oh, no. Okay, hold on. I got to find that again. Uh, stop that. Well, that sucks. Um, Moving to the country, gonna eat a lot of peaches. There we go. All right. Uh, there we go. Okay. So, first step, as you can see here. We got 
The Anaheim Ducks uh, over under 70 and a half points. Over under. Uh, 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 I'm saying under. I'm going to say under too. I think the Ducks are going to be absolute trash this year still. They're yeah. going to rebuild. The only they want to be going on as ab- their jerseys. They want to be absolutely terrible this year. They just announced fucking Racco Gudis as their goddamn captain. Like, yeah. Like, ah, that's that's <laughs> loser energy if I've ever felt any. Yeah. Yeah. Poor Z. Okay, so. Next up, because it's kind of in a random order here. Not Utah. in a random order. It's just, it shouldn't. Yeah, Utah. Over under 88 and a half points. Under. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I'm going to take the over on this, man. I think they brought in Sergachev or traded in for Sergachev. Um, I think the hype of a new building, I think they've only been playing in front of 5,000 fans or less guess, than that. Yeah. Even if they sell it, they're going to be going into a rocking building, man. They're going to, I think they're going to feed off that energy. New year, I can new maybe, week. maybe even see, uh, maybe see them kind of make a big playoff push. But then again, maybe you could be right on the under too, though. I'm saying, you know under, what? But yeah, I'll, I'm gonna stay I'll, under as well. I'll own it if I'm wrong. Yeah, I will too. Look at what we're gonna see when we get to our division stuff, right? Uh, okay. Next up. Boston Bruins, 99 and a half. Mm. It depends on how... I think it depends on the goaltending situation, a lot of it, but I I don't... I think uh, they could hit 100. So as it stands right now, because they do not have uh, Swayman signed at the time of the recording, I am going to say under. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm gonna say too. That I wouldn't be surprised if Boston hit a hundred, but I'm gonna say under because I, yeah, it's still not likely. I wouldn't be surprised, but it's not likely. Buffalo Sabers eight and a half. I'm gonna say under. I think Buffalo's under. a fucking embarrassment, but really, man, they're so bad. Oh. Like they can't and get they their shit together. Be. Like Buffalo just needs to get their shit together. Yeah. The, oh man, it's mm-hmm. trash. Cool. Also, I think I think uh if I'm uh what's that fucking defenseman's name? The big defenseman they got the young guy. Oh, uh Dalene? Matthews cross checked. Yeah, Dalene. If I was him, I'd want to be so far out of that fucking place. Yeah, I think he's going to be the next one asking to get out. Yeah, yeah maybe for I sure. Right. Uh, Calgary Flames, 81 and a half points. Over. 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 Ooh. I'm thinking under, man. They lost a lot of people. They don't have Markstrom anymore. Oh, yeah. That... Uh, I think Dustin Wolf might be their starting goalie this year. Uh, Tandem's not there. Uh, there's not many people there. I'm I'm gonna say under. Well, I mean, like they could still get over and miss the playoffs. So I'm gonna stand by it and own it if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Carolina Hurricanes, one hundred and a half. So either a hundred, a hundred. I uh, yeah, I'm gonna say under as well. I think that Metro division is starting to get a bit better, so I think points. I are still be think they. Uh, I still East. think they'll make the playoffs and even do well in mm-hmm. their division, but like I don't think they'll break. No, you're right, man. Like the the bad teams at the bottom of the Atlantic, even and the Metro, they're getting better. So besides, yeah. uh, yeah. Uh, Chicago, 73 and a half. If it's over, it's not by much. 
I don't know, man. I don't think they're gonna go over. No, I think under. I'm I'm saying under. If they went over seventy three and a half, it would only be to seventy four. Yeah. Uh, Colorado, one hundred two and a half. Ooh, so at least one hundred and three points for the over. I wish, but no under. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm gonna take over. They can't. Uh, did they even saw solve their goaltending situation? I can't remember. I'm pretty sure it's still uh, the backup from New York. Yeah, I knew New they York were. Yeah. They were in on uh, Askarov at the time, but. Yeah, if it's Georgiev, I don't see like they're mm-hmm. they're not, especially who is it Nish, 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 Nishishkin or whatever that they're missing. Oh, Niku, Nikushkin, yeah, yeah, yeah another guy you're talking, yeah. Like that killed them in the playoffs. Like they can't solve their goaltending issues. Like they used to be good enough that they could win a cup with a shitty goalie. They did it with Darcy Kemper, but yeah. now it's like. The, the team around them that's like there's is is land is coming back this year. They need some offense. They yeah, need, they need uh, some stuff. yeah. They need some offense, especially like they miss Nazim Gadri. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Columbus Blue Jackets up next at sixty nine and a half. No. Yeah, I'm gonna say under trash under. jackets under yeah. Yeah, the Dallas be heavily favored on that. Yeah, Dallas. I think that's close. I don't know if they'll go over 103 though, but they're gonna break a hundred. I'm gonna take the over on Dallas. I... Uh yeah, I'll take the over on that. Um same. I'm taking the over. Yeah. Detroit, though. I'm gonna take under. Ninety yeah. and a half. Uh, not this year. It's under. Yeah. Ooh. Edmonton Oilers one oh eight and a half. Oh, that's a lot, man. 109, 110 points that's is a lot. lot. Of points. I'm not I'm saying under. And don't yeah, I'm gonna say under two just for the fact that they went all the way to the finals, and I think they're just gonna be let's just make the playoffs, and then worry about it when we get into the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, Florida Panthers one hundred two and a half. I say over. Yeah, I see over as well. I'm guessing they're thinking uh, Edmonton's President's Choice favorite. L.A., 96 and a half. Under. Yeah, I agree. Under. Minnesota Wild, 95 and a half. Oof. Under. Yeah. I think they were second to last in their division last year. Maybe even yeah, last. They were. they were second last. With San Jose. Montreal Canadiens, 77 and a half. I want to say over just because I got such high hopes for those young guys, but I think it's under. I still think it's one more. I think they're one more year away from really doing damage. I'm going to say under. Nashville. Nashville, I say over. I say way over. New Jersey. 101 and a uh, five. No, I'm saying under. I'm saying over. I think I I have two picks for the presidents. My two top contenders are uh, New Jersey and Nashville. New York Islanders, 90 and a half. Ooh, see that that was the hardest team for me when we were do, when we were doing uh like the homework for our uh, division predictions. They were the hardest one for me. Yeah, 
because it, it, they don't have anyone huge, but they also have a full training camp with Patrick Waugh. Yeah, like they're they're going to be good. Even if they don't have a huge name, they're going to be good. Mm-hmm. New York. I think Islanders are over 90 and a half yeah. for sure. Yeah. I think yeah. the Rangers break I, 100 I too. Think- yeah, I could see the Rangers breaking 100. All right, Ottawa, 90 no. and a half. Not a fucking chance. Nuh-uh. Philly, 86 and a half. I still don't see it. I think I think Philly's going to take a step back this year. Yep. Pittsburgh. Eh, no, I don't think so. I don't know. I think See, the Flyers the are going to be better than Pittsburgh. That's the thing. I don't know. Like, is Crosby going to be that much more motivated this year? Like, I don't know. I'm going to say, oh, I'm going to say under though. Still, I think under. Yeah. Sharks. San Jose, 63 and a half. Oh, I'm going to say over. over. That's bad. 63 and a half. Holy. <laughs> Don't show up. Dude, if they can't even get like. Even 20 wins is 40 points, right? And then say. Like, yeah. That's on a few, yeah. like Loser points in there, man. There's no way. I'm going to say over. Seattle, 60, 87 and a half. Uh, I'm going to say over. They made a couple big signings this year. I th- Yeah, I think they could do over. Yeah. Uh, St. Louis Blues, exact same, 87 and a half. I think they'll do over, too. I think they're going to go under. I think you're going to see St. Louis going into maybe a little bit of a rebuild, maybe a retool, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. I know they got Broberg and they got Holloway, but in Casper Cabin. To me, I was looking at some of the additions they had, and none of them are like – Blow you are away. they going to make? Are they going to push them to be like say ten more points than they did last year? And I, I don't think so. Hmm. I'm going to say under on that. All Tampa right. Bay Lightning, ninety-eight and a half. Over. I'm going to say under. I think losing Stamp Coast is going to be really, really. Uh, I think it's going to be kind oh, of a answer. No, I really changed right. my answer. It's under. Yeah. It's under. And like, I get the, uh, what do they, they got? What's his name? Gensel? Yeah. Still. Ah. Uh, yeah. I guess we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. Leafs, I think, are over. Uh, yeah. I think, I think Leafs have a good shot at the division this year. That's, well, we'll get into it later. Yeah. Uh, Vancouver Canucks, 99 and a half. I'm going to say over. I think over, yeah. Vegas, Vegas no. Golden Knights, under. I think yeah, I... Under. Huh. Yeah. Washington Capitals, 89 and a half. Ah. Uh, I you know, uh, I don't know. That's the one I'm gonna say under. But I'm kind of curious how Pierre Luc Dubois is gonna be there with Ovi. I guess Winnipeg yeah. Jets. Winnipeg Jets. Ah, uh, I think they'll be over. For yeah. some fucked up uh, reason. I think they're going to be under. All I right. hope you're uh, right. 
We could do this. We'll make the playoffs. Actually, no, we won't be able to keep track. We'll probably be like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. We'll probably like fucking like. Yeah, like we got to go back 24, and watch this later. So 24 teams make making the playoffs. Play- <laughs> 24 teams making the playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> 30 of 32 teams are making the playoffs. Hey, boys. No. Oh, here's. Okay, so. Hart Trophy, favorites, Connor McDavid, Nathan McKinnon, Austin Matthews, Jack Hughes, Nikita Kucherov, David Pasternak, Leon Dreisaitl, uh, Karel Kaprizov, and Kale McCarr. Uh, I think Connor McDavid, best odds be incorrect. Uh, Vesna Trophy this year is Igor. Is a favorite. Uh, the Norris is Carol McCarr, kind of yeah, obvious. I agree. Followed by Adam Fox. Wow, I thought Quinn Hughes would be right up there. Well, he's tied, but still, <clears throat> I thought Quinn Hughes would be like maybe like that in between kind of Adam Fox. Rasmus Dallin in there. Wow. Oh no, <laughs> Rocket Matthews. No surprise there. Very very yeah. heavy favorite. Uh okay, the interesting ones now. Alder Memorial Trophy. Matt Matve Michkov is the favorite. Logan Stan Coven, uh Maclean Celebrini, Cutter Gauthier, Will Smith, Lane Hudson, Dustin Wolf, Ruder McGregor, and Jesper Wallstead. Yeah, I haven't heard of Jesper. I've heard of all those other guys. Jack Adams. Who here's okay? So Sheldon Keith is the favorite to win the Jack Adams. Travis Green would be. Where did Travis Green go again? Fuck! I just read. I saw a picture of him practicing. And I can't remember who it was with. Yeah, that's going to bug me. Uh... Do, 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 do. Ottawa. That, that's, that, that's exactly where it was, yeah. Uh, I don't. Th- <laughs> I don't think so. Andrew Burnett, Craig Berube, nice. Lindy Ruff with Buffalo. I don't think so. John Hines, Andre, Andre Turnigy. I don't even know where he is. John Cooper and Chris Knobloch. Art Ross. No, no surprise. Mc, uh, McDavid. Selkie Barkoff is the favorite, followed by Matthews. No surprise that is Barkoff. Ooh, here'll be a fun one. Some player futures, okay? Connor McDavid, over or under 130 and a half points. Over. I think over too. Uh, Connor Bedard over 82 and a half. Eh, That's a lot for a sophomore. Under. Yeah. Uh, Artemi Panera 99 and a half. So does he hit 100? Yeah, I think he hits 100. Yeah, I think so too. Adam Fox 74 and a half. That's a lot of points for a defenseman. For a defenseman, yeah, under. Yeah, under. Uh, Adrian Kempe, 73 and a half. I'm gonna say, uh, under, yeah, me too. Uh, Barkov, 83 and a half. Oof, I think I'll go over on over. that. Over, yeah. yeah. Uh, the cat, 67 and a half. Over I th- under, I mean, I think under Alex Tuck. Alex Tuck. Uh-huh. 
I'm gonna say over sixty three. Yeah, I'd say that too. Actually, Ovechkin though, no. Under sixty and a half, eh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Alex Lafreniere, sixty four and a half. I think he goes over. I think he over. Can see over. A, yeah, he's. Fucking... I think you could see a breakout year for him, man. I think you could see a career guy. year. Yeah. Uh, Smetchkov, sixty five and a half. Over. Over, yeah. Anze Kopitar, 65 and a half. I think over. I think he's still got a couple good years in yeah. him. Austin Matthews. Over. 102.5. Yeah, I think over. Bo Horvat, 69 and a half. Over. Yeah. Uh, Brad Marchand, 67 and a half. I say I over. I think even he does over, yeah. Brady Kachuk, 82 and a half. Nah. I'm going to say over. I don't even think Ottawa gets 82 points. (laughs) I'm going to say over. Braden Point, 89 and a half. Over. Uh, Brock Bester, 62 and a half. Over. Yeah. Brock Faber, 50 and a half. Under. I'll take over. Kale McCarr. 88 and a half. Oh, that's a lot of points. I'm still going to say over. But, uh, yeah, I was going to uh, say. Actually, you know what? That is a lot, even for him. Mm, I'm going to say under. Fuck it. I'm going to say over. Charlie oh. McAvoy. 50 and a half. I say over. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Chris Kreider, 65 and a half. I say over for him as well. Yeah. Claude Giroux, 63 and a half. I say over for that, for him as well. Uh, Clayton Keller, I'd say 81 and a half. I'd say over. Yeah. Cole Caulfield, 68 and a half. I'm not going to lie. I hope he doesn't, but uh, he probably will. I think he gets over. Yeah. Not Carter over Gucci, 60, but... Carter Gucci, 844 and a half. You know what? I'm going to say over. Uh, Yeah, I'll take the over, too. He's a rookie. Who knows? And Pasternak, under. He's getting 106. Yeah. The, the 109 is a lot of points. Yeah, Dylan Larkin, 75 and a half. I'd say over. He's yeah, 77. over. Mm, Dylan Strom, 64 and a half. Over. Over. Uh, Elias Lindholm, 68 and a half. Over. Uh, Elias Pedersen, 92 and a half. Under. Yeah. Uh, Evan Bouchard, 84 and a half. Under. Yeah, I'll say, uh, yeah, under. Evgeny Mel, uh, if Ganny Melkin, 65 and a half. Over. Yeah, I'm gonna say over in that too. Philip Forsberg, 92 and a half. Over. G T Miller, eighty eight and a half. Under. Jack Eichel, seventy four and a half. Over. Yeah, I think over too. Jack Hughes, ninety eight and a half. Over. He's breaking a yeah, hundred. Yeah. All right, let me show him one more here. We on dry side, all 110 and a half. Over. I think over two. 140. All right. Yeah. Okay. So I think that does it for that. That was actually really fun. I enjoyed that. That was friggin' awesome. Yeah, that was really cool. Um, we're about an hour and 10 minutes in. Um, what else do you want to get into here? If you want to do our hot take? Sure. All right. 
It's time for Hot Takes of the Week. All right, so I'm going to say I really don't think uh, I don't know if uh, Easton Cowan is actually going to make the team. Wow! Wah, you got guys wah. like Max Pet Max Petcheretti's looking for a spot. You got that. Um, that guy in Florida, I forget his name. Like I, I know he he went down with an injury, but still, you got him pushing for a spot on a PTO. You got Nick Robertson in there. You have Yarn Crook. You have all kinds of guys, man. You got to as a junior guy, you got to pass a lot of guys. That's why. Yeah. That's my that's my hot take. I don't think he is as much as I would love to see him on the team. I just I don't know if this is going to be the year we see him yet. Uh, what about you? What's your hot take? I'm saying Nicky Bobby's going to have pop off in the preseason, and he's going to be our second left wing. Ooh, really? I like that. I wouldn't mind that, man. And he's going to sign a fat contract that's going to make us upset. But the way shit's going lately, who it probably, it probably for this team. All right. Uh, anything else you want to get to on this? I don't know what else is on the list. Yeah, I think we pretty much got everything. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> we can mention we are going to break down every division. We're going to do our predictions, where we think everyone's going to place in the division. So make sure you check that out. Episodes are going to start rolling out on Monday. Uh, we are going to start with the Central. Then we go to Pacific on Tuesday. Wednesday, we will release the Metro. And Thursday, we will release the Atlantic. We are getting so pumped to get into the season. We are definitely going to be doing some watch alongs we're definitely going to be doing uh post reactions we're going to try and do one after every single game uh at least one of us will try and get on here and do it at least we don't not necessarily both of us but we're going to try and do every single game so make sure you check that out uh until then we will see you guys at the next one Thank you for watching. Like. Subscribe. Check out our social medias. We are now on Spotify and Apple Podcast.